Thank you. I, I will say OAuth was a group effort. It's not all my fault. Um, but thank you. So, uh, you know, I've, I've been doing this now for 18 years, and uh, I've heard a lot about hiring women in engineering, and not much actually has ever worked. So I want to talk about the one thing that I've tried that did work. And uh, I'm going to ask you to be patient with me, as I don't know much about this topic. You know, normally I talk about scalability, or architecture, or occasionally security, or engineering culture, and uh, hiring women in engineering is not something I'm a, a specialist in. But I thought it was important, and I wanted to talk about it. So I, I appreciate your patience there. So a quick history. About three years ago, uh, we decided to rebuild the engineering org at Etsy. That's actually when I joined. Uh, and it was pretty much rebuild it from scratch for, for a bunch of reasons. And you know, we set out to build a team that was, was kick-ass, was flexible. Uh, you know, we did the whole DevOps thing. And uh, we also wanted to hire for a couple of cultural values. We wanted to hire for people that we felt were good culture fits and got what we were doing, both on a technical and a product side. And we wanted to hire for diversity, particularly gender diversity. So we set out with that goal about three years ago. Um, and one year in, you know, we had, we had 47 engineers, and 44 of them were men, and three of them were women. Two of them were very senior. Uh, one was a junior engineer. Um, uh, two years in, we had 85 engineers. 81 of them were women. We still had those two senior engineers. The junior engineer had left, and we had two new juniors. Um, a 35% decline in gender diversity over a year where we were saying, it's really important. We're really working hard on this. Um, something wasn't working. And I wasn't sure what it was that wasn't working. Uh, so I spent some time asking people why it wasn't working. You know, we, we, we'd interviewed a lot of people, we'd sent out some offers, uh, we'd spent a lot of time begging, you know, beating the pavement looking for, for great women engineers, um, but it, but it wasn't, wasn't working. Before I talk about why it didn't work and what we did about it, I'm going to talk about why we cared. Why did we make it a core value? I'm going to assume that most of the people in this room are on board with this idea that, that diversity is important in your organizations, and uh, that the sort of shocking absence as, a, as an overall percentage of our industry is, uh, is problematic. Um, by the way, it is, uh, today is the first day of the Grace Hopper Women in Computing Sy Symposium in Baltimore, and we're all here, just putting that out there. Um, <clears throat> so this is going to be the only interactive part of this talk. Uh, you can buy these on Etsy. They're about $18. Um, creepy baby hands. Um, so we're going to do, a, we're gonna do a, a quick show of hands. Uh, how many people in the organization, uh, more than 50% of their engineering team are women? Great. So, and I will just say that, you know, we are talking about a period of time in which Etsy was at 4.5%, so there's no judgment here. Uh, greater than 20%. All right. Four or five hands went up. Excellent. I don't think that's 20% of the audience. Um, greater than 10%? Greater than 5%. How many people have no women on their engineering team? All right. That was the majority of the hands far and away. So that's why we're having this talk. Great. How many people think that's a problem and are actively trying to recruit women for their team? And how many people are really frustrated by that process? Yeah, almost all the hands go up. OK, so that's why we're talking. I just want to make sure we were all on the same page here. So there, there were some whys that we asked about for Etsy you know, when we got started. 80% um, of our customers are women. and. We don't think hiring female engineers somehow makes them chromosomally more connected with the product. Um, but there are some shared experiences. And also, it just made our team less off-putting for our customers. Um, so we thought that was a good thing. Uh, it, it turns out uh, an Etsy engineer who is a woman versus a man is, is no more likely to, uh, to be into many of the things on Etsy. Um, but it was still useful. Half of our staff are women. And when I got there three years, we had a really unfortunate boys versus girls dynamic. Engineers got to sit over there, they got paid well, they got to do fun things, and everybody else sat over there, and it was split right down the middle in terms of gender. And this was deeply broken, and that required changes on both sides of the house. These are kind of personal reasons why we started working on this. So let's talk about some non-personal reasons. Or actually, I guess this one's very personal. I love being an engineer, and that's part of why I think this is important. I think, like I said, I've been doing this for 18 years. I think it's a great job. It pays well. It's a lot of fun. I get to travel. Um, I think everyone should have that opportunity. I think it's really important. There's a lot of good research coming out right now. Uh, Nosh at Kellogg and Malone at Sloan, which don't say that too many times fast, that cognitively diverse teams perform better on hard problems. I have no idea if this is true. And it is not the basis of my arguments today, but I thought it was interesting that there was research backing it up. 
Here's a key reason that I'm excited about, it, better recruiting opportunities. And there's, this comes in two folds. And this is a major reason we're looking at this, and we'll come back to this over and over again. So there's a statistic that came out this week that 41% of Harvard's comp sci class of 2013 are going to be women. So your inability to hire women is going to start significantly impacting your ability to recruit. But more interestingly, we found that the engineers who are excited about the fact that we are trying to recruit women and that we have it as a value, men or women are the people we actually want to be hiring. The men who come into our organization who are excited about the fact that we have diversity as a goal are the, generally the people who are better at listening, they're better at group learning, they're better at collaboration, they're better at communication. They're particularly the people you want to be your engineering managers and your technical leads. These people are hard to find, and when you can find them, they're awesome. And men or women, they are excited about this as a, as a value. All right. So what wasn't working? Uh, just saying it internally wasn't enough. Uh, people came in and they looked around our organization and we were at four and a half percent, telling them it was a value, they didn't believe us. Uh, the switching costs are really high. We all know why it's hard to hire great engineers. Great engineers aren't looking for work. Great women engineers are not only not looking for work, there is a decent chance based on their experience in industry that your workplace is going to suck. How do you convince them that's not true? I don't know. We've been trying a few things. We've actually only had mixed success on this so far. Again, this is only my perspective. I don't have any answers, and this is not a solved problem. But when we went out and we talked to people, so like, you seem really excited about us. Why didn't you take the job? They're like, well, what I'm doing is we're working right now, and the last two jobs were really painful and horrible, so I'm going to stay place. They tend to be more conservative. Over generalization, but the people I talked to were more conservative about switching jobs, and so there was even less talent available. Um, lowering standards is counterproductive. You know, classic supply and demand. It's hard to hire women engineers, therefore we won't hold them to such a high standard. We'll get lots more in, this'll be great, it'll solve the problem, we'll jumpstart the marketplace of, the yeah, metaphors going off the rails there. Um, it reinforces the impression that women aren't good at engineering, which is obviously a downward spiral. And this was something that we ran into over and over again when we talked to people about this. So, um, and here's something else interesting when we talk to people. Most technical interviews suck. And we know this. We hate the way we do interviews. We hate whiteboard quoting. We say, oh God, it's a terrible way to, to evaluate people. We all want to do pairing and program based and bring them in for three months. How many people actually do that? I don't know, maybe this group's awesome, but most people I know go on interviewing the way they were interviewed and how they got into industry. And that's biased against a whole view of different skills and different approaches, including my favorite thing is uh, I hate whiteboard coding because I'm left-handed and I end up with ink smeared all over my hand. It's really actually quite difficult to, to lay out a complex algorithm when you're having ink smeared all over you. So, um, so fundamentally, interviews ask the question, quick, prove to me how smart you are. Smart is not optional. Quick and prove to me are very rarely actually part of the job and you're interviewing for the wrong thing. So yeah, just quickly what we learned. Uh, we weren't credible, the switch costs were high, lowering standards is harmful, and most technical interviews sucked. So what did work? We found, uh, this was uh, about a year ago, we hired, and most of the work I'm about to present, uh, we hired this guy, Mark Headland, as our VP of engineering, who is awesome. He's been an engineering manager for as long as I've been an engineer. Uh, it's a topic he's very passionate about. When he came in, he found this organization called Hacker School. Uh, and Hacker School is an organization that runs a three-month-long course on teaching people to be better engineers. And you know, they, they, they focus on like, doing a lot of open source uh, work, group collaboration. They're really focused on making you a better developer. It's non-academic, it's very hands-on, it's awesome. They have these great rules like no feigning surprise, you don't know who Richard Stallman is? What's wrong with you? Kind of thing. Um, which they describe as being, as, as being human friendly. Uh, we thought it probably fit cognitively with what we were seeing, hearing back from our interviews about what would make it friendly for women. And so we decided, oh, that's cut off, huh? All right, awesome. Um, and so we, we decided to put together a program with them that we called the Etsy Hacker Grants. And what we did is, so Hacker School is free to attend, but living in New York for a summer is not free. Um, and so we offered to fund, on a needs-based, uh, 10 women to come to New York. Pay them $5,000 for the summer, have them uh, attend hacker school, and the goal was to get a hacker school class of 40 people up to 50% women. Because there's lots of good work that says in science, technology, engineering, math courses, there's a great study that comes out of CMU, if the class is 50% women, people perform well. Uh, to the extent that it is, is lower than 50%, the group which is in the minority, men or women, perform more poorly. So that was our goal with, with, with hacker grants. We thought we could, we could do something interesting here. 
and there's a slide missing. Um, so we actually ended up, by the way, doing uh, 18 grants. We also got 37 signals and Yammer involved, and we raised it to $7,000 because we forgot about tax, which is kind of embarrassing for an e-commerce site. Um, <laughs> So the other thing that we did was we said, we need you to help us spread the word. We need this to be a message that goes out. We need a lot of people to hear about this. We need you to tell the person you know who is awesome that they should be doing this. And this was really important for success. It was really important for our success. Frankly, our selfish success is marketing what we were doing. It was really important for getting people to actually apply because everybody, like we said, was risk adverse in this and they needed to hear it over and over again. So that was really important to be very loud about this. Um, this was my favorite thing. Uh, Anonymous, the international hacking organization, thought it was really awesome that we were training more hackers. I'm not entirely sure that they knew we were using the word differently, but that's cool. <laughs> All right. Um, so spring of 2012, Hacker School got, you know, uh, 147 applicants, seven of them were women. Uh, spring of, uh, summer of 2012, when the grant started, uh, I can't even read my own number, 661 women applied. So clearly we got the word out. There was an overwhelming response, and this was exactly what we wanted. Because among other things, you know, Hacker School is actually a skills-based entry, and having an overwhelming pool of applicants really drove home the point that there was a lot of talent out there. So who showed up? Uh, like I said, seven women applied, three accepted, only one attended. Six, 661 women applied, 24 accepted, 23 attended. It ended up being over half of the class. This is day one. Uh, this is a, what the Etsy offices look like. It kind of looks sort of what you'd expect it to look like. It was just this really great energy all summer. And they were hanging out with us all summer. And that was actually a key piece of the success. Um, you know, it was men and women coding together, living like engineers. It was wild. It was, the fact that it was revolutionary was, was in itself sad. But um, you know, many of them thought it were norm was normal. Many of them were start just starting their careers. And they're like, oh, cool, there's women here. Um, that's great. Um, have you heard about this Lisp thing that I just learned about? And their minds were totally blown by that, which is kind of how it should be. Um, but it was not what was blowing my mind. So yeah, just another great uh, the feel for it. So, um, and then, but not everyone took it for granted. And this was something else interesting that we heard a lot, is I never realized the impact of being the only female in the room until I wasn't. Uh, by the way, today is Martha Kelly's first day on the job at Etsy. Um, she was awesome. She wrote about the whole experience over the summer. Uh, she did a kick-ass uh, patch to be Python that was accepted a few weeks ago, which is a sort of a integrated REPL for Python. Uh, she's great. She's joining our seller engineering team. Um, I highly recommend reading the entire blog post by her. Uh, this was also something else interesting we found, that, that valuing diversity valued a wide variety of diversity. So this was David Peter writing about the experience, and what's important to know about David Peter is that he's deaf. Um, and, and he had a great experience during the summer, and, and that was not something we expected. So how did it work? Was it, was it worth the investment? Was it just all feel good or did we get something out of this? Because I'm an engineer and I tend to be a little reductionist about this stuff. So we hired eight candidates, five women, three men. Uh, normally there is a $20,000 placement fee, so uh, we, we turned a profit, if you will, on this particular interaction. Um, there actually ended up being incidental expenses where we didn't, but you know, nominally we turned a profit. <laughs> um, we've renewed the grants for the fall. And uh, as part of this process, you know, we hired eight from Hacker School, but we now have 20 women out of our 110 engineer person engineering team, which is 18%. Um, so that's roughly a, a 4x growth over the 4.5% that we saw about a year ago. And that feels pretty good to me. You know, 4x year over year is not quite a hockey stick, but I'll take it. Um, so why did it work? Oh, sorry, and this is something else that we didn't entirely see coming. Um, we've started getting emails from very senior candidates whose names you would know saying, I saw what you're doing with Hacker School, I saw what you're doing with the B Corp certification. In some cases, I don't really need a job, but I want to come play. Um, we've gotten five of those emails. Uh, we haven't managed to close the, the three women who've emailed us with that particular yet, but we're working on it. We have actually had two senior hires. People are like, eh, I wasn't really looking for work, but that looks like fun. Um, and this was another unexpected benefit that we got out of it. So. So that worked. Um, why? The grants felt like a real invitation. People actually believed we wanted them to be there. Uh, we were clearly were working very hard at it, and that got the message out there. This is something interesting that we found. So if technical interviews suck, what do you do about it? Well, you get more data. 
And the more data we got was we spent the summer with them and we trusted the facilitators of Hacker School and we saw that they were committing to open source projects and we got to go and kind of look over their shoulders and hang out with them for beer afterwards. And we knew a lot about these candidates when they came and applied for us at, at the end of the summer. And that also, that more data allowed us to take risks. Because I said lowering your standards is problematic and we found that we had to change our standard. I wouldn't necessarily say lower it, but change our standard in one very particular thing. It is almost impossible right now to hire senior women engineers to join your organization. Statistically impossible. Um, and so what we're doing is we're hiring junior engineers. You know, we, there's a role for juniors and senior engineers in the organization and those junior engineers will be senior engineers in our organization at some point. And what we found is that for some of them, they weren't quite ready. You know, they were like, oh, this person's great, I'm really excited about them, being excited is not optional, but they just, you know, they, they haven't been in industry. You're like, yes, I know they haven't been in industry, we just sent them to school for the summer. Um, and, and, and normally we would pass in those situations. You're like, I need to err on the side of caution here, I'd rather have false negatives, you know, let them pass. And in those situations, we're changing the standards. It's like, it's not as risky as a normal candidate off the street, we know them, we spent the summer with them. And so we are taking a slightly higher risks and I think that's going to pay off. I don't actually have any data yet. But that is the one place where we are changing our hiring standards and we're doing it in the face of having more data. So what we learned about what it wasn't working, some de design parameters for a solution. Again, I can't operationalize this. I don't know much about this. This is the one thing I've ever done that tried to work. I'm really hoping that some of you are doing more work about this and you'll actually be sharing your information so we can take a cross-sectional analysis of what is and isn't working. But these are the few things that we tried that, that were important, I think, in the success of this program, where success is defined as our forex growth over a 12-month period. Um, it was a serious event. The standards were high, you had to work to get in, it was five days a week, it took the work very seriously, you were expected to be committing to, to open source pro programs. The first class was like on assembly, because you know, why start them off in the shallow end of the pool? Um, but it was also inviting. People were made to feel welcome. And that serious but inviting was a really interesting tension that I'm not sure I could pull off, but the hacker school people did really well. It was balanced. You know, it was, it was gender balanced, it was skills balanced, you know, they were doing CSS preprocessors, they were living, learning about HTML5, they were doing assembly. There's a wide range of skills and a wide range of team sizes. Um, the fundamental goal was let's build things together rather than let me prove to you how smart I am. Uh, running it in our offices meant we got a lot of data out of the situation and that made it both easier for us to evaluate things but also it made our engineering managers, some of whom were uncomfortable with the experiment and frankly were uncomfortable admitting they were uncomfortable with the experiment because, you know, that's, that's reasonable to be uncomfortable doing something new. Um, it, it normalized for them and they had a lot of data that allowed them to take risks and that was really important for getting acceptance. And we were very, very public about it. And then the one thing that we found just since they've, started, they've just started is we're seeing a lot more success on teams where there are, are zero women engineers or two. Because if there's one, you're a woman engineer. And if there's two, you're an engineer. And, and that's been really important for us. And that's what we've learned. So thank you.